Hello and welcome back to Objective C programming course. Uh, this is lecture six and it's first module. Uh, in this lecture, we're going to see a few things about foundation we're continuing to explore, uh, then a new mechanism, relatively new, maybe you, you, you know about it. Uh, it's a key value observing. Then we're going to talk a bit about uh, MVC and how to actually use it, uh, what uh, things does Objective-C and Xcode provides us with, basically Apple provides us with. And then we're even going to make a uh, simple iOS application. Okay, well, first things first, uh, I hope you all submitted your project one and uh, we are starting to, uh, uh, we're opening the submission for project two. And as you know, we have four projects in this course and projects two through four, so two, three, and four, will be about building your own application. So project two starts today and for this project, there will be a formal definition, of course, and uh, all the requirements, but basically you're gonna have to come up with an idea for your application, uh, write a full description, not just a couple of words, no translate, uh, a real description as if you're trying to sell me this, then write all the requirements, everything your application has to do, and basically this is how I'm gonna mark your final application. I'm gonna see if all the requirements are satisfied. And then you have to come up with the interface. So you have to basically open up the interface builder and without writing any code, just put all the buttons, all the uh, text tables and everything, whatnot you have, uh, create your interface and submit this package, this will be project two. Project three will be building your application. So uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to mark it, but basically you're gonna have to start writing and write most of the code for your application. And project four, the last one, you will continue and finish building your application, you will test it, and you will present it in some way. So uh, project four is basically uh, you selling me your application. And if I like it, I want to buy it. This means a good mark for you. This application could be for OS X or iOS. Uh, as you know, this course mostly covers OS X, but as you will see in this lecture and in following lectures, iOS is not much difference. Uh, there are different things, but you get the most f fundamental idea and all the knowledge you need to start building iOS applications. So there won't be much trouble if you decide to create an application for an iPhone or iPad. And uh, any type of application are welcome. The most fundamental, the most important thing for your application for the final project, project four, is your app must be executable. It will be mark zero unless it runs. So. Uh, it might not be complete, it might be ugly, it might be stupid, but it has to run, it has to be executable. English language is the language of your application unless your application is all about languages. So if your application is, uh, let's say, a dictionary, then of course it will have some other languages. And if it's, uh, say, a Russian Kazakh dictionary, then there won't be any, any English. But unless your application actually requires other languages, everything should be in English. And by the end of this course, so around the time of submitting assignment three or between three and four, uh, we will talk about how to publish your applications on the App Store, both OS X and iOS applications. So if you really come up with something great uh, or you just happen to decide to publish your application, even if it's not too great, but I hope they all be great, uh, you will be able to publish them and maybe even make money on this. Okay, so this is module one. We're going to talk a bit about foundation. This is the most boring part of this lecture, but bear with me. Uh, three things that we need to cover. First is fast enumeration. So idea is simple. Uh, when you have something like an array, a dictionary, basically some uh, structure with a lot of elements, then you often have to go through all the elements and maybe print them, maybe get some information, whatever. Basically, when you want to do this in, in languages that doesn't have fast enumeration technique, you create an index variable, which is basically an integer, and you just go on through the array or through the uh, dictionary 
using this index and incrementing this index. You all did this probably in the first couple of weeks of your university in this program. If a language has some sort of fast enumeration like Objective-C does, then there will be something like this. Uh, here we have an example of an array with four strings and you can just uh, say for some element in my array, do something. And inside this loop, you're gonna have this element object and that would be the value of your array. And each step of the loop, the value will be uh, corresponding to the actual value from your array. So this is just a time saver. Instead of making another uh, loop with index and incrementing and keeping track of these numbers, you just have a simpler way. This is not uh, a super revolutionary feature, but this is something that saves time. Another thing is, uh, two actually things we're gonna talk about is two data types. One of them is a dictionary. And if you were in some sort of algorithms course or just data structures course, you know what dictionary is. It's just a collection of values by keys. And the keys should be unique. And this is the idea. So if you have a journal of students and each student has a unique student ID, which is a number, then the ID is the key and the name of the student is the value. So there might be that two students or even more students have the same name. And this is fine because values can be the same. The idea is they have unique keys and keys is what makes them distinguishable. So a dictionary is a simple data structure that allows you to create structures like this, the key and the value. And again, as all the other structures like this and many other NS uh, next step based data types or classes in Objective-C, they could be just a dictionary and they could be mutable dictionary. Just a dictionary, just like a just array or just an string could not be changed in any way after you create and initialize them. So this first line, you see an example of creating a dictionary like this. We are creating NS dictionary and those are the keys and the values. So first one is the value and we have uh, just the name of the book and the key for that name is, this is probably an ISBN number or just some number, a unique number for this book. And if we want to create a uh, mutable dictionary, then we can create new objects uh, after we initialized the, the, our dictionary. So for this, we have the set object column for key column. And if this key already exists, then this command will replace the value. There might not be any duplicate keys for dictionaries. There are many commands, the many accessors you have for uh, dictionaries. And if you just start typing uh, my dictionary uh, space, you will see those escape completion suggestions. And some of them is just to getting the key and removing the key and just removing all the objects. You might see all the examples here or uh, in your Xcode or on the website. Okay, the last thing is the set. And if you know what set is, then this won't be anything new to you. Uh, but if you're not familiar with the set theory, then this is still simple. A set is just a collection of items. It's just a collection of data. Unlike dictionary, it doesn't have any keys. So in a set, there could not be any duplicate things because there are no keys to distinguish them. So if you just have a journal of students and two students have the same name, this is bad. This is not a proper set because you won't be able to distinguish, distinguish between two students. So everything in a set should be unique. There's no order in a set. And here you, you can see a Venn diagram uh, uh, and two main uh, concepts about the sets, at least two, two of uh, which I wanna talk to you about are presented here. So this red or I say orange circle is a set of all the things in this course. And let's say you studied it pretty hard, but not completely. So you studied uh, most of it, like 70%. So this, the inside circle is the things that you studied. And 
we can say that the things that you studied is a subset of all the things in the course because it includes some of the things that are in the course but nothing outside the course. And here is the circle that is describing everything we have on the final exam. And another important thing why I added this is we have this small intersection. And this is exactly how it's called, the intersection of two sets. And this is that elements that are present in both sets, the sets, things in the course and things on the exam. So Objective C has uh, a class and a set. And it's really easy to use it because uh, it has basically everything you need for uh, working with set theory. So this is how you create a set. I created uh, two sets, my set and your set. First I made, and you can put any object in a set. So I put a string, uh, a simple integer, uh, some other object I created before. And this is of course the end of the set. So I have a count message. I can get the number of elements in my set. I can get a Boolean of is my set a subset of some, some other set. And in this example, my set is not a subset of your set because it has completely different values, so it will be false. We can set the equalness, so if they are exactly the same, but order doesn't matter. So if I created two sets with the same objects inside but in different order, those sets will still be equal. So this would be true, but in this case it's false. If I have some intersection, intersection uh, meaning I have at least one object that pr is present in both sets, then this intersect set, a boolean, will be true. And I can get the object if it is the member of a set. So here I'm getting, uh, is some string a member of my set? And I see it's right here, so it is. And this uh, call will return us the string, some string. Okay, uh, this is it for module one. See you in module two. Okay, welcome back. This is module two of lecture six. And the topic of this module is key value coding and key value observing and binding. A key value coding is a mechanism that allows you to set and get the value of a variable by the name of that variable. And you might think this is what we do all the time. And you're right, this is what we do all the time. We get a variable, we create uh, some name for that variable, and then we use this name to get the value or to set the value. Uh, there's another way to access this variable, to get the value and to set its value. And this is the method that is similar to how we work with dictionaries in module one. Every variable created in Objective-C could be accessed uh, uh, by its key, by the name of that variable. So in this example, we have a class name, uh, a class student and, uh, and a string, which is the only variable here. And then we can get uh, to set this key to basically set the value for this first name variable by doing this. Set value and then pass the value we want to set and then for key column set the key that we want to change. And the key is always uh, an NS string, the name of the variable. And this is a stupid example because we could just say first name equals and do that. Uh, this is right, but a key value coding is just one side of uh, of this deal, the other side is key value observing. And key value observing is an idea of observing the key and doing something when this key changes. So instead of checking every time if something changed, we can just observe this key and every time something happens to this key, react in some way. We're going to talk about key value observing manually in the following lectures. But for now, let's try something simpler. Let's try to use bindings. And bindings in Objective-C is basically using this idea of key value observing 
uh, in a more visual way. So I just created a simple project in Xcode. This is Cocoa project. And I put a horizontal slider and label and a button. I didn't change anything. They are all default ones. I just put them all in this nice fashion. So I want to do the following. I want this label to show the value of some integer I have in my program. And I want the slider to change the value of that integer. So when I move the slider, I want the integer changed and as a result, the label changed. And this button will increment the same integer by one. So when I hit this button, I want to see both the slider move and the label changed. So we have everything we need for the interface so far. Let's go to our header file and create that variable that we're going to use. So this is a simple integer. I'm going to call it temp. Now let's go to my... Oh, yeah, by the way, I forgot to change this to presentation so you can see a big font. So I want to override the init function. So the function that is called when we create our uh, our window. So it is, of course, the init function that returns ID. It will return itself. So we can just start with this. We have to call the init function of the superclass. So we have to do this. And if everything is fine, so if self is not nil, then let's use this key value coding. Uh, let's say self set value. And the value I want to set is number zero. And let's just create an S number on the fly. Number with integer zero. for key and this is the name of the key and it's called temp and this is fine okay let's go back to the interface now I have the slider and two things I want to do to the slider is I wanted to make it continuous so uh, I can move the slider to any uh, direction and any value will be in there. So it's not like it's gonna jump from value to value. I want the slider to be from zero to 100 and by default it's just like that. And I want the default current value when it starts to be zero. Okay, most important thing is here. This is the binding tab of the sidebar. And I wanna bind this slider to my variable and I have different binding things here. I can bind the maximum value, the minimum value, and I want just to bind the value. So I'm going to select my app delegate and I want to bind it to self.temp. So now those two things are tied together, the integer temp and the value of the slider. So whenever I change the integer in any way, the slider will move accordingly. And if I move the slider, then the integer will be changed. So by default, we have this getter and setter uh, because this is just an integer, we can change the value, but we can write our own because most of the time we wanna do something uh, more when, when this changed. In this case, we wanna update the value of the label when the integer is changed. So I guess the first thing we have to do is create an outlet for the label because we want to access this label. We want to do something to that label. So I'm going to click on that label and then control click. And create a new outlet. I'm going to just call it a label. Actually, if we here, since we're here, let's just uh, create an action for this button. We're going to use it later. So we're gonna do the same, but instead of outlet, I'm gonna select action and I'm gonna to call this increment. This will be an action to increment the value of my, uh, my integer. 
So now we have an outlet for this label and we can access this label. So let's go back to here. And as you can see, it created the increment action for us. We're gonna come back to that later. For now, let's create our own getters and setters. So first is the setter. It returns nothing and it should be called set temp. If I decide to use another name, it's fine, but it won't be called when this key is changed. So I have to really follow the same name that it would create for us by default. I'm gonna say this will take an integer x. And of course, the only reason we're doing this is we want, the main reason at least, we want to change the temp to x. But another thing is I want to update the value of that label we just created outlet for so i'm gonna say label set string value and since it expects an s string i'm gonna create a new an s string here and have a string with format and create a simple format here just an integer x and this is fine Next, we have to create a, a getter. And the getter for the integer, of course, should return an integer and have to be called temp for the same reason I explained earlier, and it should return temp. Okay, so now if I run this application, hopefully we will see this. I move the slider and the integer changed. And because we are calling this set temp, in here we are changing the value of the label. So we didn't have to create watchers, but Xcode did it for us. It basically created a watcher and it watches the value and it reacts to the change of that value. Okay, so, uh, the other thing I want to have is uh, for this button to increment the value, and this is really easy. I'm going to do the same using the uh, set temp, and I have to take the temp and increment it. So if I run this again, I will see this. This is the binding in a nutshell. And we're going to use this a lot. We're going to use uh, key value coding and observing in this course a lot because this is a really a great way to connect uh, different things in your code together and not worry about how to wait for events to happen when those values change. So the next one is module three and see you there. Hello, welcome back. This is module three and this is the module where we're going to build a new application and talk a little bit more about MVC. So I hope you remember from lecture four, the design pattern that Apple wants us to use and really is the most useful for most of the applications you can come up with is the MVC, the model view controller. And in a nutshell, it's the idea of dividing your application into three parts. One part is the model, and this is the knowledge. This is the data of your application. This is uh, the most fundamental data of your application. The view is what the user sees and the user interacts with. So it's the window, the buttons, text fields, labels, etc. And the thing that connects the model and the controller, so it updates the model when user has some action and gets notified by the model when mo model change, uh, changes and updates the view is the controller. And it is there to divide the view and the model so that the model and the view don't know anything about one another. And you can easily change the view or change the model. 
and the model doesn't know anything about the visual side of your program and the view, the windows and the buttons don't know anything about the data and how this data behaves. Apple doesn't just want us to use it, it gives us a lot of things that makes using MVC easier. And one of those things is the NS controller object, uh, sorry, NS controller class and many other classes that inherit from NS controller to work with our model. So one NS controller uh, class that we're going to use in this lecture is NS array controller. And as you can see from the name, it's a controller that helps us to work with the array if our model is an array. And this is the structure of the program that we're going to build. We're going to build a simple program that has one window, one table, and two buttons. Clicking one button will create a new employee and add it to this table. And we're going to have the name of the employee and the expected raise of salary for that employee. And the second button will remove the employee that is currently selected. We're going to use this application in the following lectures. We're going to just build on top of it as we follow uh, the COCOA course. And for now, we're going to have this. And this might look complicated, but this is really easy. So we have the controller, and this is the NSRA controller. And we have two buttons I just described. And those two buttons will send the messages to the controller. So they have the controller as the target and they have two actions, the add action for the add button and remove action. We also have the can remove boolean and that will do two things. It will make the button to remove disabled if there's nothing to remove, if you cannot remove anything and it will do something to the controller but this is not we worry about because this NS array controller is given for us. It will react to what we do with the buttons, change the model, and not just change the model, but also update the view because the controller does both two things. The view we have to uh, show the data we have is the uh, table view and it has two columns. It's a column for the name and a column for the arrays. So this is the view and the buttons are the view. The controller is the controller and this whole thing on the right is the model. We have the document and the document is represented by an array, an as mutable array in this uh, example. An array will be filled with objects of class person, which we are going to create. So let's just go and create one. This is Xcode. As usual, we're creating a new Cocoa application and uh, the only difference is this time we're going to click this and we're going to say, I want to create a document-based application. And the document-based application is the application that works with multiple documents. And uh, example of that application is Xcode. Uh, when you open Xcode, you have all those files on the left and uh, those are multiple documents. So I saved our time and I created an application and just draw the uh, the interface. So this is the table. It's going to show our employees. And those are two buttons. I didn't add anything else. and I didn't change anything else. So this should be a fresh start for both of us. So first things first, I need to create a class for a person. So I'm going to go to new, new file and create Objective C class will be called person inherit from NS object save at the same folder nothing new and here we go so I have the person header file and the model is really simple the person has the name NS string and I have a float expected raise. This is the percentage of the salary that is going uh, to be expected by this employee. I want to create properties for this ones. So I'm going to say property float expected raise. 
for some reason it doesn't escape complete and the property for the ns string this is the ns string not ns mutable string so we cannot change the value once it's created but we want to create a property so i have to say copy meaning when i do change this i want to change the copy and say ns string the name so this is fine i'm gonna go to my implementation and i want of course to synthesize the name and synthesize uh, expected race okay so when we create a new instance of this variable i want to fill those uh, fields with some default values so for this i have to um, override my init function so i'm gonna do this it's a function that returns id and it's an init that doesn't take any parameters first of course we have to call the init of the parent so i'm gonna say self equals super init and if it's fine as usual if self then i want to set my expected race to be some default let's say it's 0.3 uh, percent not that much and i want to set the name to be it's an string so let's say uh, unnamed person and it of course should return itself okay we have everything we need for the person let's go to the document the document is going to have the array of our employees so i want to create a new ns mutable array and it's going to be called um yeah this is bad let's call it employees and i want to create a void function set employees it will take an mutable array and let's go and implement dots so we have for the document the init here um, I want to initialize the array of course so uh, I have the employees to be equal to ns mutable array allocate the array and initialize the object so we can work with it and this warning says it's incomplete implementation it's saying that because we didn't implement set employees yet so let's try that and uh, if it's already set so if employees is equal to a then just return and do nothing if it's not then say employees equals to a okay i think that's it let's go to the interface now so we have those blank interface elements that don't do anything yet and i want to connect it to the model so i need the controller and my model is based on the array so i want to create an array controller but i don't have to create it because it's provided for me so in my object library and i'm going to type array and i see this array controller a cocoa bindings compatible class that manages a collection of objects so this is not a visual thing so i cannot put it on my interface but i can add it to my application right here so now first i want to bind it my content array to a files owner employees this is the array that we use and 
I want to set it to the class name that we use as a collection, the person, and two keys for that person. One is the name, and second one is uh, expected race. Oops, typo, race. Okay, now I want those buttons to add a new employee and remove the selected one. And luckily I can target my controller. So I'm gonna control drag from add new to array controller and select add. And from remove, do the same thing and select remove. Another thing I want to have is if there's nothing to remove and my controller knows it because it handles the model, then I want this button to be disabled. So it's selected now, I go to bindings, and I have different bindings like we saw in the last example. I want to make it enabled or disabled by the array controller's uh, model keypad of can remove. Okay, I think that's it. Let's try and run this thing. So there's nothing to remove and my button is disabled. Let's add a new thing and nothing happens. And nothing happened because I forgot to bind the columns themselves. So I'm not seeing anything uh, visually. So if I click three times on this thing, I'm going to select my first column and I wanna bind this to the name and the second column is of course I want to bind it to expected race uh, another thing which is good to do is um, I know that my expected race is a percentage and those uh, tables are editable when I created the table I selected editable right there Right here. So if I change the value to something that is not a number or not a percent, I'm gonna see a, a bad, bad error. So I want to make this column to be only a percent. For this, I have a number formatter. And I'm gonna just select it here and drag it on to my cell. So it's, it's for the cell, but it's actually for the whole column. And it's selected now. Uh, the style I wanna choose is percent. And as you can see, there are different things. I can select currency and decimal, etc. I want to have a lenient percent. So let's try how this works. I build and run this application. I click add new, and I have this unnamed person with a 0.3% raise. Uh, so it's not, it wasn't 0.3, it was a float of 3, 30% uh, of 0.3 out of 1. And as you can see, I can double click and say this is Hero Petrovich. And I can change the race to, uh, and if I just type the, the number, it will be the percent. I don't have to put the percent sign. And if it's really big one, it will make it as much sensible percent as I can, but if I make it this, it will say, well, this is not valid. And I can just hit okay or discard the change. Uh, if I hit okay, I have to type something, something real. And I can remove, but this doesn't work because I did something wrong again. So uh, what did I do wrong? This remove binding was Uh, the array controller can remove. Uh, I'm not sure. Let's just do it like this for now. Uh, stop the previous one. And if I just add new ones, I can remove them as well. 
and this table works as a table now I can sort it and I can sort this and I can even create my common uh, I mean custom sorting mechanism for this so uh, this is how binding works and this is one of the things we're going to use a lot we're going to use key value observing a lot and binding as the implementation really nice and useful implementation of key value coding and observing okay this is uh, it for module 3 Welcome back, this is module four of lecture six. And the purpose of this module is to show you how is it easy to write iOS applications using the knowledge you got from other stuff, using the Objective-C knowledge and Cocoa knowledge. And uh, is the same tools, is the same main concepts, it just few other approaches and maybe a couple of new classes from Cocoa Touch, but as you can even see from the name, it's almost the same framework. Cocoa is an API and the framework is almost the same. So I want to create a simple iPhone application that is going to have a white screen and a slider. And when I move the slider, I want the screen to go from white to black. So it's sort of uh, a nice thing to um, use in the, in the dark to, to maybe light up something you can read. Uh, this is not really changing the brightness. Changing the brightness is even easier, but uh, you won't see it on my uh, simulator here. And I can show you how to change brightness later. It's just one command. It's really easy. If you Google it, it it's so easy. So I want to create a new application, but this time it will be an iOS application. And as you can see, there are different types of it. I just want to create the simplest single view application. I select this, go next, and I'm gonna call it uh, flashlight. Here you, you can see uh, use storyboard checkbox. And uh, for this project, we won't use the storyboard, but storyboard is a nice way of creating uh, an application that has multiple views. So if your application has, most of the applications have multiple windows and you move between them, it's really easy to uh, manage this movement uh, using the storyboard. Okay, so as you can see, it's, it's the same thing. It's the Xcode, we have the project, we have the files. Um, and if I click on my view controller zip file, I see my window of an iPhone. And I can make the iPad version of this application right away. So I can see this big uh, window, which is my iPad. I won't touch it now though. So I want to create uh, an image. So I have to add this image to my project. I go file, add to flashlight. And on my desktop, I have an image prepared. It's the white. So now I just have this file in my project, but to work with this file, I need some viewer. So I have a UI image view here in my objects and I put it on my screen, take the whole screen and I'll just save up some, well actually I'll, I'll make it the same. So I can select now my image because it's in a project and it's just a white, white screen, nothing, nothing fancy. And I want to have a slider. Oops, this is not actually here. I want to add the slider to my window and to make it wide. Oops, this is, this is bad. Okay, so I want to change the alpha of this image. This is why I need the outlet for this image, of course. So I'm gonna use the same trick. I have this editor opened, assistant editor, and control click on my image, drag it here, make sure this is image view, and call it an image. And this is in the outlet, right there. Now I can use it. Uh, 
I have to create an action for this slider because this slider will do something in my code. And I do the same, I drag it here and select action. And this will be called change alpha. So I want, by default, when this image is created, the alpha is 100, so it's, it's uh, no transparency at all. Not 100, but one. And I want the slider to go from zero to one, but start with one, because this will represent the, uh, the actual value of my image. Now, we're not using key value coding here, but we should. Uh, there's not no really big reason for this application uh, but if we add something more, we probably will benefit from using uh, key value observing. But since this is not the purpose of this module, I want just to show you how easy this is. I'm gonna go with it. So in my controller, all I have to do now is to implement my, uh, my action and hopefully I see my action here. So I have an image and I will set the alpha of that image to be, oh yeah, I don't have an outlet for the slider yet. I want to get to my slider and I have it. So uh, I'm gonna go back to the same thing and create an outlet. I forgot about the outlet for the slider. I want to get the value of my slider, so I have to have an outlet. So this will be called slider. So go back here. Now I can access slider and I say slider value. Just get the value of my slider. And that's it. And I run my application. And no, I stop running it. Right here you can see what I'm using. And I can select the iOS device general or iPad or iPhone. I want to set the iPhone because I only created the interface for the iPhone and it will look ugly on the iPad. So here's the simulator and this is the iPhone. So when I do this, I go from my default background to the white. So it changes, changes the alpha. And my idea was creating the background, which is black, but uh, we can change that really easy. So this is the simulator and you can do different stuff that you can do on a simulator, like shake it. And my application doesn't respond to shaking, but I could do it. Uh, I can rotate and uh, my application behaves really badly with rotation because I didn't expect this to happen. And uh, I can even use some other stuff. So those are other applications I was working on and I have the browser, I have the contacts and most of the things that I have on my iPhone. Okay, this is it. This is the, the purpose. Uh, as you can see, it's, it's really easy. Uh, if you know the basics, if you know the ideas and concepts behind all this, uh, if you know MVC and uh, Objective-C, then it won't be a problem to use the knowledge of this course to build iOS applications. And we're going to touch iOS a few more times, and we will try to keep up both topics, but uh, still the main topic of this course is Objective-C itself, and you can use it for anything. Okay, this is it. This is lecture six. Thank you for your attention and goodbye.